So back to that very practical question, what does it mean to meditate on the humanity of Jesus? Are we just talking about his passion primarily, his suffering, like what we're doing here in Lent? Uh, many of us are, are spending a lot of time thinking about all of what, what he went through, what led up to his betrayal in the, in the, in the garden and, and then his trial and then all of the abuse and then the, ultimately the crucifixion. Is that what we're talking about? We talk about the med meditating on the humanity of Jesus. Um, this has a special, uh, a special place, especially this time of year. You know, um, there, are, there are other dimensions. You can look at the whole humanity of Jesus from the incarnation to his glorification at the right hand of the Father. This is what Saint Paul does in the 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 letter of the Philippians. Though he was in the form of God. Jesus didn't deem equality with God something to be grasped at, but rather emptied himself. Well, uh, you know, that self-emptying takes him all the way back to the throne of the Father so that at Jesus' name, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that he's the Lord. Well, um, uh, uh, do you see the pathway that opens up? Uh, the passion begins when the word becomes flesh. And it's fully manifest in his last wordless cry on the cross. And, and the silence after he's breathed his last, the Father has spoken to us everything we need to know for our salvation. We need to listen to the silence of God who suffered death for us. And, and if we receive that mystery, ponder the mystery of, of Jesus' humanity, we also see, see the mystery of the Father's love, a love not vanquished by death, so powerful that they can raise up humanity. And so, so our, 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 our contemplation of Jesus' humanity also takes us into the resurrection. But when we contemplate even the resurrection, it's the resurrection of the crucified Christ. So it's not resurrection or the cross. It's the crucified Christ has come to us and appeared to us and we see his wounds and we can ponder those wounds and what they meant for us. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, wounds that um, already are waiting to be unveiled to us when he, in the first moment, moment he's in the womb of his mother. Uh, those wounds uh, are all, it, the wounds reveal what's in the heart of Jesus. And so, so to go back to your thing, you know, the passion and death of Jesus has a singular place. Uh, the the mystics and the uh, and the church say that there is a, a singular kind of grace that comes through meditating on the passion of the Lord, not because the the there's something less in the whole reality of it, but because that passion leads to the resurrection, because it comes from the Annunciation, um, uh, in the passion and the shedding of the blood what is inside Jesus is unveiled to us. What is inside his humanity is made manifest to us. So now we can see uh, what's, in, what's in his heart. It's a heart that gives itself to the end and will hold nothing back for us. And this is what we, this is what we receive when we consume the Holy Eucharist. Um, uh, uh, this unveiling of the love of the Father um, uh, that uh, that triumphs over death, but is unveiled in Jesus's suffering, and so it's going to be unveiled as we enter into that mystery. It's going to be unveiled in our own suffering too.